No. Yeah. Okay, transmitter's on. System armed. Okay. Here we go. So that's just that's just barely a trigger pull. We consider that bringing it up to an idle. And I'm just going to do a slow pull up to about 50% power. Hey guys, how's it going today? I hope everybody's having a great day. Nice and sunny outside. Oh wow, that really darkens the camera. <laughs> Got a Craig over here. Over here. It's up. Sunny, but it's cold. There you go. Uh, we were just outside. We were just outside chatting it up with Hef. Uh, I've been kind of having a down kind of day. I'm not going to give you guys the details because, if anything, it's sad. And this is supposed to be a happy day. Happy, positive stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's video special review. Uh, it was actually, I found it kind of tricky doing three different stages of slow motion through that review part, having, bringing in the still image, knowing the timing and the spacing. Whenever you hear a voiceover like that, you got to give the uh, creator credit because it's it's not easy doing voiceovers. I don't have the proper equipment. Maybe if I actually if I had a microphone, a proper USB mic with quality sound, I could sit here and just watch it. But the other part being is that GoPro footage was so detailed. Like I said, frame by frame, held its resolution, focus and clarity. That means there's a lot more information crammed into every frame of that video. So it plays glitchy, just like iPhone footage. Hmm, go figure. That'll be solved though. I get a MacBook Pro or some kind of really good editing machine and that'll be a worry of the past. At least until everybody's expecting like 4K resolution. You guys, please don't expect that. Interesting, very cool thing. If you've seen the name of today's vlog, I'll probably end up naming it after this. I built a thing. <laughs> you guys want to see it? I'm going to hand the camera off to Craig. I'm going to set up Megas. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't tell you guys. Megas is already fixed. Pretty much ready to go. You'll see that in a second. And I'm going to try and demonstrate what this thing is that I built. Go. Just don't fall in my fish tank. <laughs> Here's Megas. And yes, those of you who guessed and messaged or told me uh, your, your guess was right. This is a scale dyno. A rear wheel drive dyno, mind you, because uh, the software I have only supports for one sensor input. How does this sensor work? Let me explain. <laughs> First off, before we can get as far as installing the sensor, either on this side or this side, I'm not sure, I will, I'll explain that after. A lot of things need to be shored up. There's a lot of vibration, a lot of bouncing going on, mainly in this area. I ran out of... Uh, collared set screws so I used a 32 pitch 5 millimeter board uh, pinion. Guess what? It worked to hold it in place. I'll get of course to that you're recording so the, no. the message thing Don't has worry to about it. Don't worry. Whoever message can wait. This is more important. Okay. There are no tie downs on this dyno yet. Oh yes. Uh, show this part here. The front wing is the only part I haven't fixed yet. This is the only thing that really took damage. I'm wondering how Chewy's foot's feeling today. But I've got to flatten it out right here. And there's still enough material left to mount the wing in this position. In worst case scenario, I'll just bring it back and trim off the end. So, that's still got to be done. Now, uh, is there anything else I should explain before we show them? Yes, there is. The sensor. There is a program out there. Uh, I'll try to get the name of the program and post it up. i still got to find it in one of my hard drives on the computer. But it allows you to run over here an earbud, earbud headphone piece right here and then you plug the headphone piece into the microphone of the computer so then you put a little magnet inside here inside the lip of the rim so like even in here and every time it passes by the headphone bud it sends a tiny little blip a signal and that lets the software know what the RPM is the other thing you put in is the weight of the tube you're spinning plus the diameter 
and then it can actually start to do some serious math for you so that when you do your dyno run, you have some information to go by. All right, let's uh, set this all up and we'll give her a test. Because it's not tied down, I'll be steadying the car myself, which is probably just a good idea in general, so I don't get impaled. Okay, the transmitter is on. System armed. Okay. Here we go. So that's just that's just barely a trigger pull. We consider that bringing it up to an idle. And I'm just going to do a slow pull up to about 50% power. Now because of those intense vibrations, I really don't want to push it much further past there. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to give her one more quick. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. This is Megas on the dyno, pole number two. And the pinion fell off. <laughs> Whoa, donkey. I hope you got that, the pinion just like, whee! It's down on the heater. I, think. I didn't even flinch from that one point. Well, there you go. That's the concept so far, folks, behind the 110 scale RC dyno. I don't have any numbers to show you yet because obviously there's no sensor. We got a lot of vibrations and we got to sure a lot of things up. A sturdier post in here, proper collars. It's on bearings, but it's just still getting vibration out of the whole assembly. So, yeah, this is going to be a new way to test things out before actually putting it on the street. Thank you, Craig, for filming that for me. The world's first, uh, I don't know if it's the world's first, obviously not, because there's software there for it, but thank you for filming that, Craig. <laughs> it's a little bit more work to do on that dyno still. Like I said, just kind of secure and take care of half the vibrate, half the vibrations happening throughout the whole uh, rod that's mounting the wheel itself, the dyno wheel. Might even replace that dyno wheel with some PVC piping. I'm sure I can find something with the exact same inside diameter, and then I can use the same rim mounting method that I've already got uh, employed in use. So something different now. Jump from the dyno to show you. You remember in the last outdoor video, so I guess it wouldn't be the vlog that you watched yesterday, the day before. Uh, I know Kelly caught it because I, I caught her in the video saying, ooh, I heard that. When the rear ring and pinion were slipping in in uh, the deadbolt, and it was pretty... Here, have a listen. Ooh. Oh, I heard that. Say, so, yeah, like, that's the point of saying, yes, things are failing. It's time to do some more work. And you guys know I've had these axles apart many times within the last month. So let's take a close up look at how bad that ring and pinion is. I've even got the new one sitting here. I haven't put it back together because I had to show you guys. This to me is important to share something like this with you guys so you can see what that is gonna look like when you hear that noise. Does that make sense? It's educational. Check this out, okay. We'll have a look at the new one first. This is very tricky lighting, folks. Bear with me. You can see all those peaks and valleys. They're all uniform, even, symmetrical, right? Okay, so I'm having all kinds of focus issues, but let's just do it this way. See how nice and even, symmetrical, uniform? This is a brand new gear. Okay. We'll look at the old pinion. Here. Look how they're all kind of swept to one side. <laughs> Those are not even. Those are not symmetrical. They're definitely, definitely not good. Yeah, it looks kind of cool though. It has a spiral pattern to it. Now, take a look at the ring gear from above. You know, look, other than being dirty, it looks alright, right? But from the side, again, we see that same swept pattern. 
This ring gear is no good. So, maybe I might fasten those two together, clean them, well, clean them up, fasten them together, paint them gold, stick them on a trophy. At the end of the season, you may be able to win the stripped pinion prize. Stripped axle gear prize? So here's the new. See how nice and even and not swept? They're all symmetrical, uniform to each other. Yes, thank you Mike and Kelly for bringing me a new ringing pinion for my new rear axle. I'm gonna install that here shortly so that uh, deadbolt's good to go again. And as you guys can tell, I'm still having these focus problems. I don't know what, like it, it's not the camera, it's not me. I think I actually know the number one culprit being background and lighting. These are very important things if you're doing professional video and professional photography. If I had proper lighting, I'm sure I could solve these focus issues or maybe just the slightly fancier camera, get back my uh, 50D going, the Rebel series. And I could, I could solve that dilemma. I know I could. Anyhow, that brings up the obligatory, I gotta throw this pitch at you guys once in a while. I do have my Patreon up and going. Please check it out. The Random Andrew channel, yes, does need help with funding so we can get upgraded on equipment, maybe start going places to meet more people, go bring RC fun and excitement to places that's never been brought to maybe even. Who knows? Like it's endless the possibilities once we get a little bit of funding in place. Yes, there's a Patreon. My question to you guys is this. The Patreon is something where you pledge to and it's kind of like a once a month thing or a once per production kind of thing. If there was a one-time donation thing, so that when you can afford to, if you could, and you're thinking about it, what would be the preferred platform that you would like to go through for doing donations towards the random channel? This is what I'd like to hear back from you guys. Some people call it e-bagging. I'm actually t letting you guys know, like, yes, I'm a starving artist. I produce my content, which a lot of people do consider art. You know, I get compliments telling me it's great content, good videos, they love it. And at the meantime, I'm spending things to help make that continue and lacking in the, the, the eating properly, whatever. I never really have eaten proper my whole life, so it's not entirely a huge deal. But it's that term of starving artist, if you wanted to truly explain that position. Anyhow, I keep going random on this. My battery's about to die on this camera. Uh, I just wanted to touch base on that whole crowdfunding thing. Yes, I do need help with production and stuff. And when you do help fund a project or you help fund the continuation of the vlogs, that also makes you part of the production team. That makes you like a producer, in fact. So you're financially producing what it takes for the vlogs to go new places and go do new things and meet new people. And you have no idea. There's so many things that I wish I could just up and go do. But the world revolves around this stuff anymore, right? Oh, well. The day continues on. We'll see where we go from here. Tinkering around with that axle. Almost have it all the way back together. And then I decide it needs a flash of green. So when it's back together, hopefully by the end of this vlog, I'll have updated you on it. So the next project, I know I got like one, two, through four projects on the go at this moment. And I'm not, it's not like I'm doing one part, one part, one part. Some things take time to dry, hence paint. Uh, other things take time to dry, hence being washed. I'm working on something for Craig because that dingo body that he's got for his SCX-10, it was pulled out of retirement fight by Sam. I'm pretty sure he said when I was looking at them that they're, they're in rough shape, and it is. There's cracks along the body in certain areas. Oh, I'll show you in a second, it's right behind me. I'm going to do the fiber tape and shoe goo uh, repairs, but not just repairs, I'm gonna line pretty much the whole thing. Just a bit of shoe goo and some quality fiber drywall tape. Better the fiber, stronger. So the thing is with this, is it is fiber mesh, screening of fiber mesh, and if you lay some of it this way, then this way, uh, crossing over those fibers and then bonding them all with the shoe goo, it adds, adds what's known, uh, listen close, tensile strength. 
And you hear about tensile strength and they're talking about rope and netting and stuff like that. And there is a rating system for tensile strength. But I can't tell you what that rating system is. If you want to look it up, and you could probably even come up with a calculation to figure out, see how much strength really will be added. Now, I wash this to the best of my ability. Uh, there's, like I said, you see how that mounting hole right there is so much bigger than that one there? I have those little pieces, those little, um, I guess it would be indentations from the top in. I managed to salvage those, so I'm going to tack those back in place with some CA glue and then when I go over it I'm going to build up the area with the fiber tape and shoe glue. Hopefully it works. You can see there's been some old repairs in the front up here. I'm going to peel all that old stuff off and prep it too. I almost thought maybe I should pull these fender flares right off. But there's not any cracks that lead into that area. It's all pretty good shape. So once I get a bit more work done, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll update you guys. Well, I'm not exactly sure, folks, why it took all day, but the gecko is back together. Let me have a look at that. Yeah, I painted my rear lockouts, but I did a good job of it, so they stand out. And the suspension, uh, the mount for that link, that's the four link, three link, four link, whatever you want to call it, it's painted. I did a test real quick in the back room with us, and yeah, the clicking is gone. Problem solved. But that also means the front is most likely going to be due pretty soon, because with the back uh, slacking, it would have put more stress in the front end, so I'm going to have to get another uh, ring and pinion set. But thank you. Huge shout out to Mike and Kelly. Deadbolt is back up and going. The Mondo Gecko is ready to go again. Now I get to take a drive shaft out of Guest, put it in the Craig's truck so he can be still going. Right now Guest can't really be run by anybody who's trying to learn the hobby because of those uh, worm gear axles. That is not an entry level axle by any mean. It won't do anybody new any good in the hobby trying to drive that thing because it, it does not drive like uh, an entry level scale truck. Not with those axles. I need a set of stock SCS, SCX10 axles for underneath guest. That's what that comes down to. But in the meantime, we can use one of guest's drive axles in Craig's dingo so that Craig can continue going out and learning the ways of the scale truck. Is that how you say it? Yeah, something like that. Got word that one of our RC addicts, our local Rail City RC addicts, picked up a summit today. Good job, Ethan. Looking forward to seeing that thing out and about. Uh, we'll have to get a summit crawl going on through the trails over by your house. Suicide trails. Awesome trails for a summit. Other than that, though, it's uh, it's like 10 o'clock in the afternoon. It's time for me to sit down and start doing some editing. So, the progress on Craig's body. Oh, yes, the progress on Craig's dingle body. I'm going to have to show you that tomorrow because, like I said, it's getting late. I want to sit down and get editing. I don't want to make the vlog even longer. So... Let's just call our quits for now. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and support. Time and time is a rare commodity these days, so thank you for sharing it with me. Subscribe if you're not, like if you liked, and share if you do that kind of thing. You gotta think positive if you wanna stay positive. Keep a smile on your face. We'll see you here tomorrow. Good night. Vlog over.